The equilibrium potential represents the potential where there is no net movement of charged particles across the cell membrane. Let's explain it this way. First, we'll express the intracellular and extracellular concentrations in milliequivalents per liter. Now, the orange bar represents the intracellular concentration of ion X, while the blue bar represents the extracellular concentration of ion X. In the upper right-hand corner, we have the Nernst equation, where the equilibrium potential is shown in green and expressed in millivolts. Also, the intracellular ion concentration is shown in orange, while the extracellular ion concentration is shown in blue. Now, to the right of the potential axis, we have a green arrow, which points to the equilibrium potential that corresponds to that seen in the Nernst equation, and it represents the electrical potential where there is no net movement of ions in or out of the cell. The yellow arrow, which sits above the equilibrium potential, represents the potential at which ions will move out of the cell. The purple arrow, which sits below the equilibrium potential, represents the potential at which ions will move into the cell. Now with that in mind, let me show you how the equilibrium potential changes as intracellular and extracellular ion concentrations are increased or decreased. Let's start with an intracellular concentration of 5 milliequivalents and an extracellular concentration of 140 milliequivalents. Now at those concentrations, we get an equilibrium potential of plus 86 millivolts. Now at these concentrations, the concentration gradient favors the movement of ions into the cell. This occurs when the potential is more negative than plus 86 millivolts. However, if we made the electrical potential more positive, we could force the ions to move out of the cell against its concentration gradient. We'll talk more about the relevance of this in another lesson. All right, let's move the intracellular and extracellular concentrations to 15 and 135 milliequivalents respectively, which by the way is typical for sodium ions. Now, at these concentrations, the sodium equilibrium potential equals plus 59 millivolts. This also means that sodium ions will move into the cell when the electrical potential is less positive than the equilibrium potential. However, if we wanted sodium to move out of the cell against its concentration gradient, we'd have to make the electrical potential more positive than the equilibrium potential. Let's continue by watching what happens to the equilibrium potential as the intracellular concentration is increased, while the extracellular concentration is simultaneously decreased. Notice that as this happens, the equilibrium potential becomes less positive. In other words, it moves towards zero. Now eventually, the equilibrium potential will reach zero millivolts when the intracellular and extracellular concentrations are equal. Now as the intracellular concentration begins to exceed the extracellular concentration, the equilibrium potential becomes increasingly more negative, as we see here. Now the equilibrium potential for potassium ions is minus 86 millivolts when the intracellular and extracellular concentrations are 140 and 5 milliequivalents respectively. Furthermore, at this equilibrium potential, we know that potassium ions will move out of the cell down their concentration gradient when the electrical potential is less negative than the equilibrium potential. Likewise, potassium ions will move into the cell against their concentration gradient when the electrical potential is more negative than the equilibrium potential. So from this demonstration, we hope that you're able to identify the relationship between the equilibrium potential and the intracellular and extracellular concentrations.